Good morning. Welcome to Rising. I'm here bright and early. <laughs> very, very early this morning. Uh, so thank you so much for joining. I'm here with Robbie today. It's the two of us hosting the show. It's very early, so, uh, so you know, here I am. <laughs> here we are. But I have good news. My voice is finally back. <laughs> I had bronchitis last week and had to, like, quit the show in the middle of it because I literally couldn't talk anymore. Yeah. Uh, it was horrible. So I, I was censored, first censored by YouTube, then censored by my own mortal failing body. Very sad. Yeah, your body was like, oh, what are you talking about, Robbie? We gotta... <laughs> I said <laughs> ivermectin, and then that was it. No, just kidding. Just kidding. <laughs> All right, All right well, well, what do we have on today's show? Sure. Well, today we have Chris Jackson and Rachel Bovard for our rising panel to discuss dire midterm warnings for Democrats. Then Rachel will stick around to break down the questions surrounding now Twitter owner Elon Musk's ties to China following his acquisition of the social media platform. And don't worry, of course, I will go over the entire meltdown over Musk uh, on my radar today. Definitely looking forward to that. There has been an absolute meltdown over that. Um, all right, so today no radar for me because I made a deal with the producers <laughs> that when I when I have to wake up at four o'clock in the morning to do the show, the whole show, then I don't need to stay up all night writing a radar. <laughs> so no Fair radar enough. for me today. Fair but, enough. But we will talk about a hit piece that was actually published about me uh, yesterday, so we will talk about that. But let's get into our top line for today. So Fauci said that it's disturbing that a federal court would rule against the CDC's COVID-19 travel mask mandate, adding that this is not a judicial matter. Let's listen. Both surprised and disappointed because those types of things really are the purview of the CDC. This is a public health issue. And for a court to come in, and if you look at the rationale for that, it really is not particularly firm. <laughs> And we are concerned about that, about courts getting involved in things that are unequivocally public health decisions. I mean, this is a CDC issue. It should not, should not have been a court issue. The Wall Street Journal's editorial board went after Fauci's comments in a piece titled All Hail Anthony Fauci. It says, quote, Government at, governments at all levels have abused their emergency powers during the pandemic. Some deference to public health officials might have been warranted amid the uncertainty early in the pandemic. But as Justice Neil Gorsuch wrote in November 2020, even if the Constitution has taken a holiday during this pandemic, it cannot become a sabbatical. Amen to that. Yeah, I mean, yeah. this is not a, a, at all surprising to hear Dr. Fauci say this because, right. you know, he is the, over the course of the pandemic, the mask has slipped more and more and more. And he has just, you know, revealed himself to be this absolute, you know, creature of the federal health bureaucracy and one whose main interest is in protecting its power, growing its power and influence. So it's not actually surprising that he would say, I, you know, I wouldn't surprise the other way. If he'd said, yeah, well, you know, the court gets to make these kinds of decisions and we have to abide by that, that would have that would have truly shocked me. I don't know about you, Kim. Well, I mean, you know, ideally the guy knows about the Constitution, right? I mean, ideally right. he understands checks and balances, but clearly in this statement he didn't, and that's why he's being eviscerated for it. You know, look, what's even, I think, more disturbing, you know, he says, oh, it's disturbing that the courts could overturn the CDC. No, what is actually more disturbing is that unelected health officials can regulate our lives like this without any sort of checks and balances. That would be, you know, these health czars going and growing in power would be actually more disturbing, especially if they can't back up why why they're mandating us to do certain things. But, you know, the CDC is supposed to be an advisory board giving guidelines, and they have gone well over that line and instead are now issuing mandates and demands. And that is when the court steps in and says, hey, you know, uh, there, there's actual, you, know, you can make guidelines and then the lawmakers need to be the ones to actually issue the laws and then the courts decide whether or not those laws are legal that's the way right. the leg you know the ex executive to the legislative branch to the right. judicial branch works right that's um, so clear but, right, yeah. right the you know it would be one thing right i oppose mass mandates vaccine mandates etc but you know, if congress passed a law saying we you know we need to have this we're giving new given the reality of covid-19 we're giving new authority to the cdc to implement these kinds of things well that will be one thing that did not right. happen the cdc claimed under centuries old guidance that it had the right to do all these things and as for you know what fauci said about well you know this should be a, a health matter and that should not 
be under the court's purview. I mean, you could say that about literally any court Anything, decision. Like, yeah. what you know, Brown v. Brown v. Board. That was just a schooling decision. Yeah. I mean, that, that's literally <laughs> what the segregationists said, right? How dare the right. fe, you know national court get involved in a local schooling issue? Or, or you know, the, when the court told what it was Andrew Jackson to stop stop you know butchering the Native Americans, and he said, well, no, you know, I, I go ahead and enforce it then, right? That there's a long history of people who don't want to obey the court saying, well, no. This isn't this isn't really their thing. We should get to do whatever we want. It, it, like it, there's nothing new about that. But of course, Fauci, in yeah. his arrogance, thinks, well, yes, the health of because I'm sure in all those cases he would say, well, of course they have to follow the court. But in his case, it's a special exception because you know he's a super important health official. Yeah, it's really, I mean, you make a really great point. You could apply that to absolutely everything. I mean, the court is not legislating. They're, they at least try not to legislate from the bench. What they do is they just look at legislation or look at these sorts of executive orders, you know, or, or from the executive branch, and then and then they decide whether or not they're actually constitutional. Um, so you really could, I mean, you could say that about Roe v. Wade, right? Like that is a medical issue, not something that should be decided by the courts, I suppose. You could say that about marriage issues. You could say, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's like a religious issue and it shouldn't mm -hmm. be decided by the courts. I mean, everything, ideally nothing's decided by the courts, I suppose. Like we can all work it out without having to go to court and having to sue one another. That would be an ideal unicorn utopia world, <laughs> I suppose, right? right? But unfortunately, there is overreach and that is why these cases end up in court. And so look, you know, Biden seems to understand this. He countered that when Fauci making these sorts of statements saying, well, this shouldn't have gone to the courts. The Biden administration on the other hand has said, yeah, okay, uh, you know, the courts uh, decide what they do, but, but we think the decision was wrong. And so that's why we're going to appeal it. So rather than saying, gosh, the court shouldn't be involved, the Biden administration is at least saying, well, we've got to utilize the courts. We just think the court made a wrong decision. And that is, you know, I, I, I can't, re you know, I'm, I'm, I don't mm -hmm. mean to like make any excuses or give any passes for Anthony Fauci, but he is not, you know, a, an actual politician or anybody that works in, in the legal field or, you know, he's a scientist experimenting on puppies. So I guess he wouldn't maybe know exactly how the process is supposed to work politically. A lot of Americans don't fully understand it. Maybe Fauci's one of them, I suppose. But yeah, I mean, his correct response should have been, the court's decided, right. we're gonna challenge it in court. We don't agree with the court. The CDC is gonna present better evidence the next time around. And that's really what happened. I mean, the CDC didn't present to the, to the courts what the courts determined to be sufficient evidence for the mask mandate to be continuing. And if they wanna continue it on, they need to present better evidence in their appeal. Well, and the I courts, suppose. I think that the courts right now, given the realities of our completely dysfunctional Congress and, you know, the, the, it's so much, there's so much fighting, there's so, so little laws coming out of Congress because you actually have to have, you have to have a, the, the president or a veto-proof majority and, you know, you, like Biden can't even, you know, can't even get the signature legislation he ran on passed, which is fine, I'm against it for, for me, but I, I can understand the frustration thinking, like, oh, I need, six, you know, so how many people do you need to actually get uh, laws to go forward? So given that reality, Congress is, uh, uh, the courts rather, even though they were not intended to fulfill a legislative function, are almost serving as a legislative function because they are less partisan and less gridlocked and less, uh, they're basically just less screwed up than the rest of the branches of, of government right now. Maybe they'll catch up. But so there's a lot of, uh, uh, I think there's a lot of de facto legislating being left to the courts. Uh, and, but also, yeah. but everybody gets upset. You know, we want, like the, the idea of our system, right, is that some, some liberties, some rights are protected by our founding documents, by our Bill of Rights. And even if some administrative agency or a, or a majority of voters or legislators pass something that violates that, even if there's majority support for it, the, like the whole premise of our system is that it is appropriate for the court to say, no, actually, it doesn't matter how badly the experts think this is right or how or even if this is popular among the people or the president wants it this violates the first amendment or the second amendment or the fifth amendment right. or and you just and you can't do that and that is what we accept in our system we're not a pure democracy we're not a technocracy we are governed by a healthy 
respect and protection for certain rights that we decided are not up for negotiation, you know, no matter what people say. Yeah. Well, and there's a lot of things, you know, uh, some people have been making some comments saying that, well, the CDC, um, you know, there's a lot of things that work. There's a lot of treatments that work. There's a lot of medications that work. There's, a, you know, hand sanitizer works. But should the CDC be allowed to mandate that you, for example, get chemo when you have cancer or that you mm -hmm. sanitize your hands all the time, you know, everywhere you go? Can they mandate that, um, you know, you know, these types of mandates, like, are they... Can they force you into all of these things? Um, and that is like the big, I think, underlying question when it comes to this mandate. Biden is challenging this in court. I don't think that's going to be politically very popular if this, if the mandates are, are able to come back. I know that some people feel like, well, we've got to be able to allow the CDC the power. And so reversing this ruling would kind of hand that power back to the CDC, whether the administration actually decides to go forward with a mask mandate again or not. It's set to expire anyway. But if they were to, let's say, reverse this ruling and uh, they maybe would not extend the mask mandate, but would just have it, the ruling, so that in the future they could then, you know, in the fall, mm -hmm. let's say, go back to mandating masks. And we are seeing, by the way, universities, they are now starting to mandate masks again because of the spread of COVID. So it wouldn't surprise me if the masks come back in the fall. I know you hate to hear that. But if this ruling gets reversed in courts, if they do challenge it, I do think we will see some mandates coming back in the fall, especially for public transit. Oh, I just uh, I just enjoyed my first maskless flight uh, yesterday. It was wonderful. Uh, short flight from Michigan back to DC. And uh, yeah, it was great. And basically Curious. no one was wearing masks. That's what, I was, on, that's, yeah. what, that's what I'm wondering. How many people chose to wear a mask? Because now it's personal choice. Right, so, I would say it was it was definitely under half. It, it Maybe it was like 25%, maybe 30%. Okay. Maybe there's probably fewer. When I, I, was, I was in uh, the Grand Rapids, Michigan, uh, there was probably even fewer than that in that airport. But when I came, and I expected more in DC when I got back, but in the DC airport, I, I mean, I was, you know, I was only, I was just like exiting it, but I did not see a lot of masks, I didn't think. So that, that was my That's... first heartening because DC loves their masks. Even when they, even yeah. when the CDC said you didn't have to wear them outdoors, like half of all people were still wearing them outdoors. So th this is a, That's... this is an encouraging yeah. sign. That's why I don't trust the polls when they say that the, the majority of people still want mask mandates. I don't believe it. I live in super liberal L.A. where everybody was wearing masks outside. I got yelled at for not wearing a mask while walking my dog outside, not being around anybody. I mean, this is how, you yeah. know, and I live yeah. in like a really liberal part of L.A. And even then here, 10 percent are wearing masks when they go inside places. It is not at all the majority. So if people are really wanting this why aren't they wearing them then? So I just don't believe it. I just think it's the it's the small group of people they pull uh, wherever they get these polling people. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I, I don't think that they're popular and I think it would be negative for the administration to bring them back. But yeah, oh, no, absolutely. Take the win. Let yeah. it go. Well, anyway, Seriously. we'll have uh, right. more to talk about uh, Elon Musk coming up next. Yeah, your radar. Yep. Yes. <laughs>